Over the last 18 months, we've seen much of the national conversation shift to improving racial inequality and inclusion. That same conversation applies to American classrooms, where some say a lack of diversity is actually harming our students. The most recent government data from 2017 shows a large racial gap in our public schools. It shows 48% of students are white, 15% are black, 27% are Hispanic, and 5% are Asian. The gap is even higher for teachers. For more, let's bring in Shavar Jeffries. Shavar is the national president of Education Reform Now. Shavar, thank you so much. Welcome uh, to the show. I'll get to how race is factoring into our schools in a moment, but first, this pandemic has created challenges for students of all ages, from pre-K to PhD programs. How do you think the American education system will fare coming out of this pandemic, and what impact do you think there will be if school districts do not offer parents a remote learning option in the fall? Well, our kids, particularly our, our students who are in poverty and our students of color, are facing potentially generational challenges in terms of educational opportunity. Uh, we've seen that students in poverty in over the last 14, 15 months, when so many schools have been closed throughout our country, have fallen uh, behind up to nine months in learning. Um, uh, and that's precipitated by inequities in terms of access to broadband infrastructure, inequities in access in terms of uh, uh, access to a live teacher providing instruction. And so it's really essential that we begin to get our kids back into school. Uh, the remote learning option really should be a secondary option if there are some specific districts which, for ever, whatever reason, can't safely and responsibly get our kids back into school. But fundamentally, we really got to get our kids back into school. We know our low-income students are falling further and further behind as schools are closed. Uh, we got to get the children back in front of live educators with differentiated instruction so we can address some of the challenges that our children have faced uh, in the midst of the pandemic. Obviously, this pandemic put a lot of pressure on, on various pressure points within our society, including uh, racial equality, racial justice. Um, some people believe schools um, across the country need to have an honest and open conversation about race before they reopen in the fall. Obviously, this past year was a tumultuous one, given the deaths of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, to name a few, uh, coupled with the pandemic. Institution leaders have promised students their campuses and classrooms won't be the same when they return in the fall from a racial justice view. What do you think needs to change the most? We, we really need a, uh, a systematic reassessment of the ways in which we engage on racial justice issues in our schools. First, we have to reimagine a curriculum. We have too many of our, our students being taught based upon a curriculum that isn't diverse and equitable in terms of the content of what is being taught. We have too many students not learning about their own background and their own culture uh, in their own schools. Um, and that's where we, we need to begin to embed anti-racist curricula. There's a big political conversation in our country around that. Uh, we have some states and some districts that are really recoiling against dealing with some of the darker aspects of American history. Uh, but if we're ever going to get past some of the challenges of our history, we have to be able to uh, confront it in a forthright ma manner. So part one uh, really uh, deals with reimagining our curriculum. Part two deals with we got to get more diversity into our classroom. I mean, as you pointed out earlier, uh, we don't have, uh, uh, in too many of our districts, the educators don't reflect the students. So we got to have more programs, get more black and brown folks in our classroom. We got to increase teacher pay so it's more attractive to a, a diversity of potential educators. We also have to look at our graduate schools of ed, which also are not diverse. And those are the pipelines from which uh, our teachers are coming from. So in all of these different areas, we really got to center racial justice in terms of the way in which we go about educating our students. And I think that's a really good point. You know, in order to move past this, we need to learn about it. That's the first step, uh, you know, seemingly an obvious first step. Many policy experts say campus leaders must have conversations on increasing educator diversity in the classroom, as you touched on. Um, why is that so crucial and what's being done on behalf of your organization uh, to improve that? Well, we look at a variety of different pieces. I mean, one, we look at reimagining and making it easier for low-income professionals to access graduate schools of education. Uh, many of our graduate schools of education are not diverse in terms of uh, the uh, educators who are coming through those programs, and so we have to make it easier uh, for educators to get into those programs. We also have to increase uh, uh, pay for our educators, as I talked about earlier. Uh, the low pay in too many of our schools uh, disincentivizes uh, many low-income professionals from entering into the profession uh, in the first place. Uh, and so these are the types of programs we have to look at. Uh, we also see some states and some districts investing in grow-your-own programs to get more local 
professionals into their schools. Uh, so we need a comprehensive approach. We need to reimagine our curriculum. We got to diversify our graduate schools of educator pipeline programs and pay our educators better. Uh, so that we can begin to have more of our classrooms reflect the diversity of our student body. Yeah, it really all begins in the classroom. What an important uh, thing to focus on. Shavar Jeffries, um, thank you for coming on. National President of Education Reform Now. We appreciate your time. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.